So next up is uh, Maxime. Uh, I introduced you out of order previously, but uh, and you're going to talk about IOMMU. So that's good. Thank you. Okay, so I'm Maxime Kuklaus, working at uh, Red Hat in the virtualization team. And today I will talk about how we are working to, to improve the VNF safety, safety thanks to VIOS chooser uh, IOMMU support. So first I will give some background information on why do we need this, uh, this feature, uh, how it is done uh, in QMU, in the guest. Um, then I will enter into the details of the VIOS chooser implementation in DPDK. I will give some, uh, some figures to, to see the impact of, the, of enabling the IOMMU support. And before the, the questions, I will give some ideas to how we could further improve uh, the, the support, uh, the performance with uh, this uh, feature. Okay, so why do we need IOMU support? Um, today, when you, um, you, you use a Vertio PMD in the guest, you either have to, to use UIO or VFIO, but uh, in an unsafe mode. So when using VFIO, it means that uh, you need to, um, sometimes to need to, re to rebuild your kernel because the unsafe mode is disabled by default. And it uh, also means that you use uh, guest physical addresses uh, to, uh, as uh, pointers for vid queues and descriptor buffers. And this is problematic because on the host side, the host user backend and maps all the guest memory. With, uh, so so the, the VOS user backend could, uh, can uh, read and write any uh, pages into the, the VM. So if you had a, a buggy or compromised DPDK application, um, which for example would pass a kernel physical address uh, as a buffer pointer, uh, it could make the VIOS backend to, to overwrite uh, kernel memories in the guest uh, with uh, packet contents, or uh, in the transmit side, it could uh, leak some, uh, some kernel pages, for example, to, uh, to the outside world. So first, what we need is to have the IOMU support in the guest, so, so we have it. Uh, for, for the kernel, uh, it's uh, since uh, kernel 4.6 uh, that uh, made the use of DMA map uh, in the virtual unit driver. And uh, for DPDK, it is available since DPDK 16.11 uh, when using uh, VFIO. So in the end, all the, when you map uh, a page, uh, it ends into the IOMU driver, and it is uh, either trapped by the, by, it, it can be trapped then by QMU. So we can consider two, two kinds of mappings. Uh, first, we have the dynamic mappings, uh, like the kernel button driver. So it uses uh, kernel memory, so uh, as, as soon as the packet is processed, uh, we release the buffer and it can be used for, for anything else. So it has a nasty effect on the other side because uh, it means that ev for every packet we will receive uh, an end map which will be trapped and become an IoT be uh, invalidate on the host side. So the next time we want to add Access the same page, we will have an IoTLB miss. And the other case is uh, static mappings, uh, like DPDK. So we, we at application initialization time, when we prop the device, we map all the memory pool. So when we first access a page, uh, we get an IoTLB miss on the other side, but then afterward it will be uh, cache it, IoTLB cache it. Um, so to, to add support uh, for the VIOS user backend, we first need to, to have a VIOMMU support in QMU. So um, for this, we, uh, we, um, we emulate uh, IOMMU devices in QMU. 
Uh, we have uh, Intel and PowerPC that are supported today, and uh, ARM support is ongoing. Uh, or we could also have a, a Verta UI or maybe a device, and ARM uh, provided uh, some uh, specifications to, uh, to implement such a device so that we can have a platform agnostic uh, IOMMU support. And this is currently being discussed, so it, it is not supported yet. So the idea of the VIOMMU is the same as a physical one, is to, uh, to provide IO translations and device isolation. And uh, for, for each emulated device, uh, are based on a generic uh, API for IOTLB, for example, to get um, IOTLB, uh, an IOTLB entry from uh, an IOVA and permission, and also to, to notify the, the, the VHOST backend or VFIO on QMU side to, uh, when, uh, when there is a map and a map. So, getting VHOST to uh, IOMU support in QMU, so it was initially introduced uh, by uh, JSON. Uh, one in, uh, in for the kernel backend, uh, it implements uh, address translation services uh, from the PCI spe specification uh, using the, the API I mentioned uh, in previous slide. And on the host backend side, it, uh, it it requires some changes to to be able to notify uh, the backend when there is an IoTLB uh, update or invalidate. And uh, we, the backend also has to, to, to the backend driver has to, uh, to, receive, to be able to receive the IOTLB miss request from, uh, from the backend. So, to do this, uh, on, for the VOS kernel backend, uh, we use uh, the, the read and writes from the Chardev, VOS kernel Chardev. Uh, knowing that the over uh, request, your kernel uh, requests are use, uses IO control, we do this because uh, we need to, to be able to, to, to for QMU to receive uh, IOTLB MIUS requests from, uh, from the kernel. So um, the messaging implement three message tips, message tips uh, types like. Uh, IOTLB miss that are sent uh, by the kernel to, to, to receive an IOTLB entry from, uh, from uh, an IOVA. And, uh, and then you have the, the update and validate message that are sent by uh, QMU to the kernel to, uh, to, to insert or remove uh, IOTLB entries. And uh, on the, in the kernel driver, um, there is a cache IOTLB cache that is implemented uh, based on interval trees to improve uh, lookup performance. And we have also a dedicated cache for the virtues that are really often accessed to, ev to avoid uh, looking into, um, to, to do a full cache lookup. So now let's see what, uh, what is done in, uh, in the VST user side. So the idea was to, to be as close as possible to, to what was, has been done for the kernel backend. Uh, one problem was that uh, we had, um, we, we needed to, to send IOTLB miss request from the backend to, uh, to QMU, and today the VIOS uh, user protocol only supports uh, master initiated requests, so only QMU can send requests. So, we could do the, uh, the existing socket bidirectional, but it would require a lot of changes on QMU side and also in, uh, on the DPDK, DPDK side. So what we did was to introduce a new socket that is created by, uh, by QMU. And if, uh, if the protocol feature is supported by DPDK. So this new channel uh, will be is used today only by the IOMU feature, but we have uh, we are working on supporting post copy live migration, but we also uh, certainly makes use of this new channel. Um, so for for the IOTLB uh, part uh, of the protocol update, uh, we have. Uh, um, 
introduce uh, two messages, one for the channel um, to do new requests, one for the master initiated uh, side, so, um, which is used to, to send update and validation from uh, QMU to the, to the back end. And we use the same payload as the kernel uh, implementation. So, so, so we have a lot of common code between kernel and user backend in QMU. Uh, for this request, we need to have the reply hack feature supported. Uh, and it is mandatory because when you invalidate, when the guest in, uh, unmaps a buffer, uh, we need to, to be sure that the backend is no more using it when the invalidation is uh, completed. And on the SLEF side, on the DPK side, uh, we also introduced new message chip type and to, to send the IOTLB request, request. And it's also using the same, uh, the same payload, the same, with, uh, this time with a reply feature, but which is optional. And we don't use it in current implementation. So um, to avoid uh, a querying a QMU for every translation, each time we have to translate a buffer, uh, we, we implemented a device IOTLB cache into DPDK. Um, so, so we have a single writer to the cache, which is a VIOST user protocol thread, and we have multiple readers that are all the PMD threads that need to do the address uh, uh, translations. And uh, we could think that it's a great case for, uh, for uh, LCU. Uh, so I have tried with it, it works, but the problem is that uh, lib the, the user space library for LCU is GPL, LGPLv2. So only a few a small function can be in line to the code, so it could uh, introduce an overhead. And also it has, a lot, it has some dependencies to the DPDK uh, build, and, some, uh, and that's a problem because some distributions do not ship with, uh, with this uh, library by default. So the fallback was to use uh, reader and writer's locks. So for, for this case, it's better than regular mutexes. Uh, but it still has a cost because we use some atomic operation and, um, and at the beginning we called it for every packet but, uh, but we did some optimization to, to, to make it um, to, 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 make, to, to call it only once for every packet burst and also we moved it to we moved to, uh, to a pair of VOTQ IOTLB cache instead of a pair device uh, to, uh, so that we, can, uh, we don't have uh, concurrency on the, on the lock. Um, so the initial implementation is based on throated lists, so this is very basic, and this is not really efficient, but this is enough today with uh, big, uh, huge pages like uh, one gig huge pages. For small uh, huge pages, like two megs, uh, we can have a lot of entries, and so it, has an, it adds an overhead. But we can uh, further improve the, uh, this uh, later. Also, we need to, to have a cache that is large, uh, so that we've, uh, when using DPDK in the guest, uh, we don't have um, uh, any cache eviction. And normally, cache eviction should only happen when there is a bug in the, in the guest or, uh, or, the, or a, mal a malicious application. So if we now look at the, um, at the cost of enabling the IOMU support, um, I first ran some PVP benchmark that are documented on dpdk.org with uh, fairly recent hardware. And so on the host side, I run test PMD in IO forwarding mode. And in the guest time, I do uh, max swapping so that we access uh, the packet. Oh. Okay. So with the latest version, uh, what we see with two mega pages is that uh, we have a uh, 
we, we see some performance, uh, we see the performance impact when enabling the IOMU. And um, as I said earlier, we have a lot of entries when using uh, uh, to make pages. So we have an overhead when doing the lookup. And uh, with uh, one gig huge pages, we, we don't see any regression, but, uh, but I think normally we should see, uh, we, we are doing more things, so, so we should see uh, a small regression at least. But the reason is that the Vertio uh, PMD is a bottleneck in this setup. So I ran some more benchmarks, with, this time micro benchmarks using test PMD in TX only, RX only, and high look back. And here we can see the, the performance impact of enabling the IOMU with uh, one gig huge pages. And uh, that's a bit surprising, but we, we don't uh, see uh, an, uh, as big performance impact as with PVP uh, on two meg pages. So I think that I haven't spent much time on it yet, but I think that explains because uh, we don't use a lot of packets of MBUFs in, to the, in this case. So, so the cache, uh, so we have less entries in the cache. As so what could we do next to, to improve uh, the performance? Uh, one thing I prototyped quickly is to, uh, to, to avoid the, the, the overhead of the cache lookup, is to, to merge uh, IoT IOTLB entries that are both physically and virtually contiguous with the same permission. Uh, so it was really a rough prototype, but uh, with doing this, I recovered the performance uh, regression I noticed with two make pages. But it still needs some work, so, so it will not be for next release, uh, because we need to, to, to define whether when we have an invalidation, if we invalidate all, uh, all the merge entry, or if we split it into multiple entries. And still, uh, we have to do some tests with uh, kernel in, uh, in guest to see if uh, it has an impact with dynamic mappings. Uh, the other solution is to, to do as the host kernel uh, backend do, uh, does, uh, to um, be to implement the interval trees into uh, DPDK. So we need a new library for this. Um, uh, we should, it, it will be helpful even with uh, the previous uh, optimization I mentioned. And to, uh, to improve uh, performance with a uh, Vertionet uh, driver in, uh, in guest, which is very poor, we, I measured only a few thousand of uh, packets per second uh, because of the IoTLB miss for every packet. Maybe we could, uh, when doing a burst of packets, uh, first check uh, all the descriptors, vertical descriptors uh, addresses and send miss so that we burst, we, we batch all the IoTLB miss and we, we, we can um, then, uh, we, we are not blocked for every packet when, uh, misses, when uh, updates would be there. Okay, so uh, the, the design, uh, as I said, is close to the VIOS kernel part. So uh, this is something that has already been tested for, for the kernel part that is uh, starting to be used. Um, the performance impact is uh, quite, quite reasonable with one gig huge pages. And with two meg pages, we, we, we still have some work to do, but, uh, but we have some ideas to improve uh, the performance. Um, for, um, for, kernel, uh, for kernel in guest, Vertionet kernel driver in guest, uh, uh, the low performance is really a blocker. And for now, we don't have good uh, ideas to, uh, to not to, uh, to have this uh, performance, big performance impact. So I'd like to thank uh, Jason Wang and Wei Xu from uh, the Vert team who worked on Vert kernel AMU support and Peter Shu who implemented the VAOMU support in, in QMU. Thanks.
Hi, um, I've seen that the via UMMU patches for QMU have been posted on the Red Hat uh, bug tracker for QMU. Have they been sent upstream as well? Via UMMU? Yeah. QMU? Yes, it's upstream. Uh, which version? Because I need well, that. Well. I, I, I know it's available in 2.10. 2.10. But okay. maybe it, I think it's uh, available since uh, 2.9 or something. Okay. And then another thing, maybe a comment on the URCU um, uh, option that you talked about. Maybe it could be an optional dependencies. I think we have a few others uh, already in DPDK, so that could be an option maybe, given there's the um, IGB UIO as the fallback, so maybe it could be optional. Have you thought about that? Uh, can you make it again, please? Uh, sorry, so uh, you said you tried to use LibRC URCU, right? Yes. Um, Maybe it could be an optional dependency. We have a few already. Uh, have you thought about that? Given there's fallbacks. Yes. So, oh, okay. Uh, have, you so, have you thought about that? Yes. Uh, yes. But yes, I think that's uh, one way we could do it. Uh, the other way would be to implement a CU in DPDK. But it's uh, I don't know if someone wants to maintain this. <laughs> yeah. um, so that's uh, I think that's a good idea. But I don't know if the build process now can can help to, uh, the changes in the build process can help to, uh, to handle this. Okay. Thank you. I, I just want to say one little detail. In my experience, reader writer locks are rarely ever a good idea because it turns out that they're more expensive to get it for the reader side than a simple spin lock because it turns out that you basically cause a second cache miss mm -hmm. and unless you have a writer or multiple readers are going to show up in that very small window and that's a critical window which it almost never is in an application uh, a simple spin lock will give you better performance okay. um, and it's simpler and has less issues about starvation okay. um, so about the kernel performance in the guest when uh, this is enabled. Have you tried with um, the option, the pass-through for IMU? Uh, with pass-through, we, we, uh, we have a single entry into the cache, so it's very fast. It's like if you use uh, okay, so a single page for, for all yeah. the... Okay, and uh, do you think that this solution could have an impact on uh, VM migration? Oh, sorry, then here. Could this uh, work have an, imp an impact on virtual machines migration? I don't think so. No. Okay. Hi, Max and Santosh here. So you have a plan for this extending to uh, live migration also? This, uh... Uh, so yeah, I was, I was asking about this uh, vhost IMMU thing at uh, user space side. Mm -hmm. So you support, you going to extend that to live migration also? Yes, because when, uh, when you li will live migrate, uh, your DPDK will be, uh, you will have a new uh, DPDK process running, so the cache will be empty and you will have some cache, IOTLB cache miss after what? After That's right, so that is in your to-do list, that's just checking with you. Is that in your to-do list? Are like, do you planning to work on it or like uh, it's, it's feature list, fish list, something like that? You have it in your roadmap? Uh, no, not yet. Okay, okay thank you very much, Maxine. Thank you.